The themes in this film are actually quite heavy, but interestingly, there isn't a whole lot of content. There, there isn't much that you see in the film which could be considered particularly offensive or upsetting um, or challenging to watch um, at all. So let me talk about what you will see. I mean, the themes we're talking about are quadriplegia as well as suicide and more specifically assisted suicide. Suicide has a very dominant theme through the film um, and where would probably talk in the violence category, even though, let me just be very specific, you don't see any acts of violence in the film, but there's some implications of things that have happened. So for example, you see a scar on somebody's wrist. So you know that in the past, and it also is, is also discussed, that at some point in time, this particular person has attempted suicide. Likewise, the idea of assisted suicide, legal euthanasia, is frequently returned to in this film. And this is the kind of theme that you will talk about. This is what you'll, you'll find yourself after the film. The, the discussions will be motivated by these particular topics. Um, likewise, and again, you don't actually see any violent events happen, but the person who becomes a quadriplegic, it happens because of a motorcycle accident. Again, you see some vision leading up to the accident, but you don't see the accident happen. So that should give you an idea of how things are handled in this film. There's a little bit of yelling and arguing and that kind of thing, but really there's no scenes of what I'd call actual violence. Likewise, blood and gore. You don't see anything bloody or gory. And despite the nature uh, and the realistic the nature of someone who suffers from paralysis, it's a pretty messy and pretty nasty and very painful affair. This really is tiptoed around in this film. This film isn't about the medical or scientific side of quadriplegia. It's, this is a very lighthearted romance. So the closest you get to anything which discusses the reality of living with quadriplegia is you see someone who is in a wheelchair or is bed bound um, or who is in a hospital room and there's you know IV drips and wires and cannulas in the arms and that kind of thing. You don't really get the sense of just how awful and challenging uh, quadriplegia is. And this is actually, as a side note, this has actually caused quite a bit of controversy um, around the film. There's some people who have taken a lot of offense to the fact that the reality of um, living with quadriplegia or living with someone who's quadriplegic has kind of been sidelined and glossed over. But anyway, that's another story. So um, let's get on to sex and nudity. There isn't actual, actual any sex scenes in the film, but there's a few sexual references. You do see couples in bed together and there's discussions about wanting to have sex or that people do have sexual relationships. There's discussion of infidelity and um, marriages, ex-marriages and, and all that kind of stuff, multiple partners, previous husbands and, and things like that. But it's just touched on mostly for comic purposes. So sex and nudity, even though there's a blossoming romance in the film, it's not really um, a strong theme. In fact, any of the scenes between couples are kind of, um, let's just say they're sort of straightforward. They don't really sparkle or crackle with any kind of sexual energy. There is some kissing in the film and some caressing and canoodling and that kind of thing. But yeah, sex again, isn't particularly a strong film. Um, drugs and alcohol. So there's no illegal drugs at all in the film or no references to drugs, but you do see a cabinet filled with prescription drugs. And the idea of medication and being medicated is discussed a few times through the film. Likewise, alcohol. You do see people uh, drinking or holding alcoholic drinks, but it isn't a particularly strong film. And gambling, um, some characters take a visit to the racetrack and the, the, um, a bet is made off screen on a particular racehorse. So yeah, gambling does have a presence as well in the film. Um, interestingly, the film has been rated for swearing or coarse language, and I personally didn't find language to be a particular issue in this film. I think the S word was said once, A word maybe twice. Um, so I'm not really sure, unless I misheard something, I, I didn't find a lot of swearing or coarse language in the film at all. So it is a tearjerker, it is an emotional film. Um, as I've sort of been trying to explain, it's, it's not a heavy film at all. It's quite formulaic in terms of the genre of a romance kind of genre. Think kind of Nicholas Sparks, that kind of thing. So if you go into it wanting to cry and who doesn't like to have a good cry at the movies, then yeah, you'll get a lot out of this film. It's also very loyal to the book, which is good news for anyone who's a, who's a fan of the book by um, Jojo Moyes. So, 
On one final word, despite all of that, all the emotion and the touching drama of it, I just wanted to mention that there was one little moment which actually touched me more than anything in the whole film. And it was right at the end and actually wasn't between the main characters. There's a, a tiny little scene, and I'm sure it was kind of unscripted, where Charles Dance, who plays Will's father, and Amelia Clark, who plays Lou, just happens to pass by each other and he just looks at her with this, just the most beautiful, touching, fatherly, just gorgeous look in his eyes. And I imagine the gen it was, it's a very genuine look and I imagine it's been, it's come naturally out of the relationship that they've, they've probably built by working together in Game of Thrones. But funnily enough, out of everything that happens in the film, it's at that tiny little genuine moment which actually touched me more than anything in the whole film. So go and enjoy the movie, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of me before you.